What's up everybody, this is Danny and welcome to my full review of the LG G3. Now I've had the Korean model G3 for over two months now and I wanted to reserve my full review of the G3 until I can get my hands on a US version and Sprint was nice enough to send me a review unit so I can go ahead and compare them and give you a better comprehensive review of the G3 in the United States. So I'm gonna go ahead and compare the US version a little bit to the 400K Korean model and we're gonna also see what comes in the box. The gold model that you see here is exclusive to the Sprint network in the USA. So if you're trying to get it on contract, then you will have to go to Sprint if you want this gold color. But the box is extremely simple. All you get is a get started guide. You also get a bag to recycle your old phone with. Then you get a very simple power brick or wall wart, and you get a micro USB to USB cord. The design and the build materials are exactly the same between the Korean model and the US models. You get that same brushed plastic back that looks kind of like metal. And actually the gold color is very nice. I didn't think that the gold color was going to be as nice, but in person I definitely like it. One of my favorite gold phones so far. There aren't too many differences between the Korean model and the US model and thank you Sprint for not putting a huge carry logo on the back but you will see that there is a TV antenna on the Korean model of course we can't use that here in the United States but the back plate is easily removable and that will expose the 3000 milliamp battery and you can replace that at any time and it also comes with micro SD card expansion up to 128 gigabytes so that's a nice inclusion. But if you look a little closer, you can see that the connection points are a little bit different here. And one of them are for NFC and the other set is for wireless charging. And sad to say, the Sprint version does not come with wireless charging built in. If you were wondering, the Korean version of the Circle case works just fine on the US version, as you can see by the gold power button and volume rocker on the back. So if you're a fan of the Circle case, make sure you check out my review, and I will leave that in the description section below. Let's talk about the design of the G3 for a little bit. And I absolutely love the design of the G3. And it's all plastic, yes, and it's got a 5.5 inch display. And I love the curvature on the back as well. Feels good in the hand. But the one thing that I do love about the G3 are the small bezels. And for a 5.5 inch display, it's actually a very compact phone. I mean, look at it next to the Oppo Find 7 and the OnePlus One. And look at how much taller those two devices are in comparison to the G3. And most people might say, well, who really cares about that? But in everyday use, you will notice that it's much easier to hold in the hand. And of course, it's still not a one-handed phone, but it definitely feels better in the hand. And you would know what I'm talking about if you use this on a day-to-day -day basis. The plastic can feel a little bit slippery in the hand, but I don't think it feels cheap. It still feels like a premium phone. Right above that Quad HD display, you will find your array of sensors and your 2.1 megapixel front facing camera, which isn't the best quality, but it definitely does its job. On the back, you have that one watt speaker, which also sounds pretty good. And on the back, you will find a 13 megapixel camera with the industry first, the laser focus. One of the big deals about the LG G3 is its 5.5 inch Quad HD display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and that brings it above 530 pixels per inch. So that's a lot of pixels being crammed into that 5.5 inch display. And overall, it's a good panel. It's got decent viewing angles. It's got some okay color replication. And the thing is that when you're watching regular media, like if you're catching up on YouTube videos or watching a movie, or that you're catching up on a TV show or something, you're really not gonna notice the extra resolution that is on the screen, unless it's optimized for it. Like if you watch the LG Quad HD movie that comes included, it looks really, really crisp and nice. And that portion is okay, but if you're looking at the text on the main screen, you might notice this really weird over sharpening effect that you can see on the icons and on the text for some people. It really bothers them, but if you've never seen this display next to other Quad HD displays, I don't think you're really going to notice it, but some people do not like this little bit of an over sharpening effect that you get on this panel. And I definitely noticed that when I was using the other panels such as the LTE-A Samsung Galaxy S5 and the Oppo Find 7. 
While I was jabbering on about that, you can see that there is a new LG UI and that was one of my biggest gripes about the LG G2 was just how heavily skinned it was and just how unusable that skin was. But actually the skin on the LG G3 is much more simplified than the G2 and I actually enjoyed using it. Yes, it's still heavily skinned, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was on the G2. It's a huge improvement software wise and there are some hiccups here and there, yes, and it is not the most fluid experience that I've had on a Android phone because you're going to get some skips here and there, but for the most part it performed well and the software is a huge improvement over the LG G2. For example, I like the way that they cleaned up the notification shade for on the G2, it was so cluttered, but here it's nice and simple. And I also like how much customization there is in the G3 software. And I also like the software buttons, they're actually a little bit better to me than capacitive buttons, so I'm glad that they included the software buttons here again. But you can change the button combination here to whatever you like, you can add a shortcut to the notification shade, which is perfect for one-handed use and a shortcut to the dual window where you can use more than one app at the same time. What I didn't like is that you can't choose just any app that you can run simultaneously, but that's easily changeable with Root. Another cool software feature that I liked is the adjustment of the keyboard height. So if you have thicker fingers or smaller fingers or whatever it may be, you can adjust the height to get the best typing experience. I actually liked the keyboard, it was pretty good. And on the front of security, you also get knock code here, where instead of your regular slide to unlock or your pattern, you can actually tap a sequence of different patterns on the screen to unlock. And if you like the IR Blaster experience, you have one here so you can control your TV with it. And it's running Android 4.4.2 KitKat, so you're gonna get a decent Android experience here. I wanted to do a quick display comparison between the American model, which is on the left, and the Korean model, which is on the right, because there are definitely some improvements here. As you can see, the color temperatures are definitely different, and I think I prefer the US version. You can see that the color replication is much better, there's a deeper contrast, and the color replication is better. So maybe they're just two different panels, but definitely I like the improvements that I see in the US version. Let's move on to performance in my two month plus of use. It's being powered by the quad core Snapdragon 801 processor with three gigabytes of RAM Adreno 330 GPU. And when it comes to the gaming, I didn't find it to be a bad experience whatsoever. And even in the most graphically intensive game like Modern Warfare 5 here, you can see it's running it without a problem. Now, sometimes it does skip a frame or two, but the quad HD display, the Adreno 330 GPU and the quad core Snapdragon 801 do a great job when it comes to everyday use and when it comes to intensive gaming. So of course your battery's gonna get drained a lot more when it comes to gaming like any other Android phone, but I found playing games is definitely a great experience and the one watt speaker on the back is pretty loud, so I think you'll like it. I also think we forget that it's a phone as well, so it needs to make phone calls. Had the privilege of testing this phone on two different networks, on the AT&T network and also on the Sprint Spark 4G LTE network, and they both perform great. The speaker was nice and loud, crisp in the ear, and the 4G LTE connectivity was great. And the one thing that I must note is that it's an all plastic body, so it has much better reception than a lot of the phones out there. I was very impressed with the reception, especially inside buildings. So I think as a voice phone and a connectivity, I think it is definitely a go. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering about the 13 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization and also the autofocus, which is also guided by a laser, the first in the industry. And I think that you will be pretty impressed because when you look at this camera software, it's another thing that I really like about the LG software this time is they just simplify the camera app. There's not a whole lot of bells and whistles here. You can see how you can just change the resolution and you can do a few minor tweaks here and there, but they just kind of leave it to the user to just take a photo and to be honest it does a great job when you just snap the photo you have magic focus where you can focus after the fact like many other flagship phones today flip to the front facing camera and turn off your flash but pretty much after that it's just a simple one click just take a picture and go 
when it comes to image quality, it can take some stunning pictures in great light. As you can see here, it's great for a everyday camera. And I also think that the macro mode is very nice on this camera, a little bit sharper and better than some of the other Android phones out there. And the color replication is pretty good. Now, once in a while, you will get this overexposed picture. You will get that once in a while, but for the most part, it does pretty well. Now, the HDR is pretty aggressive like this. As you can see, it kind of over sharpens everything. It's pretty aggressive. And even in low light conditions, the HDR is a little bit harder but low light condition I wish it was a little bit better as you can see it starts to fall apart it's noisy so I wish that the low light performance was a little bit better but overall the G3 camera is pretty good now the 4k or ultra HD resolution video is also pretty good on here I've noticed that it does tend to overexpose as you can see here but I think for the everyday person the 4k video is pretty sharp on here it's not the sharpest 4K now I've seen. I think there's other phones out there that shoot better 4K, such as the Galaxy S5, the Oppo Find 7. But for the normal everyday user, I think you're gonna love the 4K video recording option on here. And another awesome plus is that there's optical image stabilization. As you can see, I'm moving along here and it works very well. So let's conclude with the battery life. And it comes with a 3000 milliamp battery. And this is the portion where I wanted to have the US version because it's carrier optimized. And I was getting about 12 hours of battery. This is the best battery life that I've ever gotten on this Sprint US model, which is about 15 hours. And I got about four hours of screen on time. But my average is right around 12 hours. Exactly the same, actually, that I got on the Korean model. So that's kind of weird. I thought that optimization would make a little bit better battery life but actually about 12 hours of battery life is what I was getting and sometimes if I really used it heavy in a day I would have to charge right around 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night so if you think a 12 hour day is a full day for you then that's gonna be okay for you but I've definitely found some better battery life on something like the OnePlus One. So the burning question is should you buy this phone and if you had a two-year contract should you get this phone? I say yes, I think it's one of the best Android phones out there on the market. I definitely love the design. The rear buttons on the back, you would think that'd be weird, but trust me, it's nice. Double tap to wake the screen. The software is nice. The 13 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization is probably one of the best out there. And just hardware overall with its Snapdragon 801 processor, three gigabytes of RAM, and the quad HD display, it's got a lot going for it. Yes, it's not the perfect phone we're still looking for that and even though there's a myriad of options coming out in the near future i think the lg g3 is still a great option for an android phone right now so what do you guys think do you agree do you disagree let me know in the comment section below and if you're new to the channel then make sure you subscribe for more quality content like this make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this content follow me on twitter at super scientific for i'm reachable there all the time and i appreciate you watching this video and i will see you guys in the next one